Lee Rhodes has set out to light up the world. She once dropped a candle into a hand-blown glass and suddenly saw hope. Despite her cancer, she overcame her illness and started Glassy Baby, a Seattle company that handcrafts colorful glass candle holders. Today, Glassy Baby's revenues are in the millions, but Lee insists on donating a healthy percentage of those sales to charity. Martha Stewart has featured her products, Amazon's Jeff Bezos bought into her company, and she's won entrepreneurship awards for her inspired leadership. That's just a few reasons why Lee Rhodes joins our exclusive list of the innovators. I'm Hanson Hossein. Welcome to Four Peaks. Well, Lee Rhodes of Glassy Baby, welcome. Thank you. You know, you've actually said in the past that Glassy Baby stands for celebration and memory building. What do you mean by that? I think um, it's something that um, when you give someone, when you go to our Glassy Baby store or online and you choose a certain color with a certain name, they usually have meaning to you, whether there's an orange that makes you feel a certain way or a name like shine or love. And um, you can uh, start a storyline with just one glassy baby or with a multiple glassy baby that people keep and every time they see them or light them in their house or their kitchen or bathroom they remember you they remember the event that that um, you know made it so they got that glassy baby and um, memory builds the, as your glassy baby collection builds memories build and um, there are very few things in the world like that flowers are little like that in that they represent times and experiences but then they die and so that, that's amazing because I was actually thinking, what's the difference between giving, I'm just going to run a little video so people can see what it looks like, what's the difference between giving a glassy baby to somebody who means something to you as opposed to giving them a really beautiful bouquet of flowers? I think um, in this day and age, giving a bouquet of flowers is beautiful and it, it has meaning culturally to all of us and it does waste water and oftentimes, most times of the year, they're imported on a ship. Um, and so if you're into sustainability or if you're in kind of the new mindset of the um, century that we're in, living in right now. I don't think um, flowers are quite as um, appropriate. And I think with Glassy Baby, instead of getting it and then throwing it away, you're getting it and keeping and building a collection. And so although you may have photos that remind you of that time with a huge bouquet of flowers in them, uh, we feel that you know, with Glassy Baby, I know from the, even the ones I have in my kitchen right now that are my favorite, um, I have some sheer cream in my kitchen that are the very oldest Glassy Baby. And every time I see them, I just remember that day. And when I light it, it's just a safe um, place that um, helps with all those times in your life when you just needed to like, take a deep breath. And, and I don't, I'm not sure flowers really help. Well, I that. love the way you describe that. You're talking both, first of all, about building a collection, building a relationship based on that collection, and the stories that go into that. So, for example, I bought this recently for my daughter, <laughs> and she's really into purple. And so, I th what's, do you know what color this is? Sweet pea. And is, you know, <laughs> does this say anything? I mean, she, I know she really loved it, and she wanted it immediately on the dinner table when we had it. And I look at this, and the candle itself, yes, it's got purple when you don't have the candle, but when you light the candle, it actually gives off even a different set of colors. So you're getting a real diversity and a different experience each time that you look at this. Yeah, and every single Glassy Baby is different because they are all handmade in our Seattle studio. And I think that what happens is even if you were to have seven sweet pea lined up on a table, every one of them would light differently. So just like we're all individual and unique and every experience that you are remembering or noting with a Glassy Baby is independent and unique of all the rest, um, it becomes yours the same way our children become ours and and so I think it's easy to become that memory building or just kind of collection that that's thoughtful and kind and alive I mean I think there's nothing like color and light working together uh, that touch your soul and your customers obviously have a huge passion for this and will start <laughs> yeah. collecting I mean these, they're not especially inexpensive they're forty four dollars each but you feel like they feel like they're getting something out of it by making that investment. How do they how do they perceive that purchase, you think? I do. I think that they're I think that people are beginning to write stories with Glassy Baby and we we do it through our community. So people bring in order to really appreciate a Glassy Baby, you know, you did it for your daughter. Your daughter came, she had an idea of her favorite color. She will always remember that this is her Glassy Baby. And there are very few things in life you can say that about. You know, you get when you get when you have three children, you get three different Pat the Bunny books. And they're all important because they mean something then. 
But as time goes on, you can't remember like who's pet the bunny. But frankly, I can't even tell my three kids apart and their children apart from me photos. You know what I mean? So there are very few things in life that can really note and um, encourage just remembering things that are important in community. And, and, and this came out, this idea came out during a time where you were facing great adversity. You had, you were, you had cancer at the time. It was not the first time. And somehow this bit of inspiration, you put a candle into something your husband at the time had blown and, and all of a sudden you said, wow, there's something there. What was it that struck you? What was that thing that went on in your head that says, wow, there's something special here? I think like everyone else that sees a glassy baby, it's, uh, it's simple, but it's really very simple. There's nothing, there's nothing you have to do um, or be. I don't have to be like pretty, I don't have to be thin um, or rich or all those things. You know, every, every single morning we wake up with the 17 doubts before we wake up and say, I'm the greatest. And I think what glassy baby allows you to do is just appreciate simplicity and, and that color and the, really the, the candle moving in it. Um, helps you, you know, alleviate some of that stress we all live with all day long, every day. And I think that that's why people love them so much. And you know, obviously, you started with one glass, one color. What you now have four hundred colors. Yeah. What's the process? <laughs> what's the, I can imagine. <laughs> but what's the process that goes into actually thinking that up? Because it seems like each color is really special to the people who purchase them. Yeah. So how every do you, single one of what's, what's the process that goes into figuring that out for, uh, from your side? Well, we um, we make our Glassy Baby here um, in Seattle from Color Bar that's imported from Europe. And strangely enough, the only place that imports it from Europe in the whole country is located here in Seattle. And we really have to make colors that they're offering. So within their, off maybe they have 1,200 colors, we can choose our 400. And, yeah, that we that we make, and um, so we're kind of restricted by that. Thank goodness, because that would be really crazy. And then really, we we make the new colors, and we sit around, um, kind of, and pass off names. Um, we have a new, we have a new, three new names this week. We have um, Bambi coming out. What color is Bambi? What is it's, closest it's to? It's white with a little bit of brown, and it. it's uh -huh. beautiful. It's really gorgeous. And then we have one called Cozy, which is a salmon. We haven't had a salmon in a long time. And so we're happy. Salmon fits that. Seattle really well, yes. by the way. Yeah. Yes, salmon color. And then a call cozy. And then um, I can't remember the third one. But that's what we do is we just slowly add names that will help. We, we're always trying to encourage people to have a storyline with their glassy baby. So they remember the name um, with the color. And it kind of just, again, brings that soulful time in their life back to the, you know, back to the surface so that we appreciate it's just there, you know, it helps you appreciate things. And what I love is that each one, despite the fact that they may have a color and a name, that each one truly is unique and oh, distinct absolutely. in its own individuality. Yeah. So when we return with Lee Rhodes, we're going to talk a little bit more about her unique business practices and how she gives back to charity. We'll be right back. We're back with Lee Rhodes from Glassy Baby. So Lee, we've talked about the colors and the uniqueness of the product. What's also unique is your amazing approach to, to business. You give back a percentage, not from your profits to charity, but from your sales, which sounds crazy to me because you're, you're, you're not even looking at how much money you're bringing in, you're looking at how much you're selling. What went behind that thought? Um, I, Glassy Baby started um, because I, I realized that there was a, a place in the healthcare system that wasn't being f fulfilled, a real niche. It was between health insurance and people's family and friends if they had them. <clears throat> a lot of people wouldn't come to chemo because they couldn't have, they didn't have bus fare, they didn't have, they weren't well enough, they didn't have food to eat that was healing. Um, and it was an eye opener for me. And this is something you experienced as yeah. well. Oh, when yeah. you were, uh, in we the have chemo a picture room. of here when you were yeah. g going through your oh, illness. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, that was eye-opening to me, and when I, you know, when you are not the person that, um, that that dies, which is kind of a weird statement, but when you are, it's hard to then go back to everyday life, go back to the carpooling, go back to the, you know, you, you kind of just, you've left your, um, you know, band of soldiers back in a chemo room, and you're out on your own again. Because that was a real bonding experience that you had with oh, all those people who helped you, the right? Most. I mean, I haven't been to war, but I imagine it's a lot like that. I think the chemo rooms are battlefields, huh. and everyone's fighting side by side. And um, when you're one of the ones that doesn't fall, I think that um, it's hard to get back. I mean, this seems whiny, and I know I'm the luckiest person in the world. And I did find that there was a void in my life. And um, so 
the glass of business plan works for me because and I think it works for everyone because it, it really stems from the idea that there's this niche that needs to be filled we can um, supply people with bus fare we can supply people with blue jeans we can supply people with um, you know basic basically like really great meal and then we can also touch on things in their lives that help them want to fight you know, like a paperback book or a magazine or a latte, things we just totally take for granted. So when people buy the Glassy Baby, I, I mean, I've been to your store, you do show how the, the, the links to the charities. Do people associate that giving back at the time that they're purchasing, purchasing this very personal item for themselves? Or is that something that matters to you as, a, as oh, the no. owner of the business? Yeah, no, we're, we're, every Glassy Baby gives, and we give an enormous amount. I mean, people love to see the huge checks we write there on our website. I mean, 40, 60,000 hour checks out of a company that's not, you know, we're, we're pretty big, but we're not huge. And um, business experts would say, hey, you, you're, you're shooting yourself on the foot here. Yes. Focus on the business first, then give back. Yeah. What's that about? How do you fight back at, with people who are telling you you're doing this wrong? Because we, we, our motivation and our success comes from our mission. It comes from the authenticity of we are doing something that is very simple. It's very, it's the simplest thing in the world. It's taking care of people in a way and a place that isn't touched by most most of society and um, I didn't know existed and so I think when you when you're motivated by that it's easy to come up with a plan and stick to it and that's what happened was we came up with this mission we're gonna give back revenue and um, it's allowed people to really because we're so authentic that way people have bought in and our community just grows and grows through people committing to um, what Glassy Baby does which rather than rather than Lee Rhodes is making all this money and then she's gonna give it back that wasn't gonna work because that wasn't what I, that wasn't my passion. And other than the fact that people really relate to the authenticity and the purpose and the beauty of the product, how did you f find a way to engage with the community that wanted to be in a relationship with you? You know, I think it was all word of mouth in the beginning, and then you know we do have partnerships, so with, like the, with the University of Washington, for example. Our store um, in the University, University Village does a lot of partnerships with you all. And um, this no month of December, we give 10% off the top, so we give uh, between 40 and 60 thousand dollars, I think, in the month of December, to you guys every year. And um, I think it makes people feel feel good, but also it puts value. We've never discounted a Glassy Baby either. I mean, they are 44 dollars. But you do have. Uh, oh, lines that wrap around yeah. the corner when you have your second sale. Well, our right? little orphans that need to find a home, we do have a second sale twice a year. Yeah. Um, but our our real glassy baby will uh, have never been discounted. Um, they all have value. They're like a currency to me. Every single one of them has value. No, there's no reason why I would ever have a sale. Um, and I think I think that the the really the the differentiation of us and most retail stores is that when you walk into a glassy baby store you either don't have any idea and you're just struck by the color and the simplicity of it or you know exactly what you want and you're coming with a story and so when those two things meet in a glassy baby store um, that's built community building. Well, I love the stories. I love the community. I love that you stick to your principles. When we come back, we'll talk to Lee Rhodes about why she actually does all of this in Seattle. When we do We're back with Lee Rose from Glassy Baby. Lee, we were just talking about your pricing philosophy and the importance of that and how it actually amazingly, amazingly builds that community. One of the reasons why your price is there is that you actually insist on handcrafting, hand-blowing Glassy Babies right here in Seattle. I can imagine there might have been pressure at some point to outsource this to other countries, but you've kept it here in Seattle. Why is that so important to you? Um, we have an incredible... Uh, incredible glass blowing community here in Seattle and um, we did at one point try outsourcing and it didn't work for us we could never fit them in our storyline so they just sat that was a nightmare <laughs> you, you said storyline I mean on one hand yeah you people you want people to really enjoy the quality here but wouldn't those lower prices also make it more accessible what were you compromising by not doing it that way well we, it just had nothing to do with what we do. We make our glassy baby in Seattle. It takes four artists nine minutes. Every single one of them is an is a trained um, artist on their own. Um, they are part of our world. They're part of our community. And I mean, um, it didn't make sense because when when we imported them, there was nowhere to put them. They didn't. I don't. I don't need a cheaper glassy baby. What I need are more glassy baby by the people that make them. And our studio is beautiful. And it's. Um, I feel like it's respectful. Um, you know, four people working really hard to make one glassy baby 
there's no way I could ever then turn around and say, I'm going to discount that because they're important and their manufacturing for me um, is a huge part of the message that we try to s give at Glassy Baby, which is things can be simple, things can be unique in, in their simplicity and in their just in their um, individualness or mixing together. It's like different friend groups. Um, and, and the Glassy Baby being made here in Seattle is just really a part of that whole uh, community that we're building that people buy into. And this is what's so amazing is that you ha you obviously have your very personal strong principles, but it seems to me that your relationships, both with the people who work with you and the people who buy your product, guide you in a way in terms of how you uphold those principles. Yeah, well, you know, we're, we're, we, we've never, ever, ever, we've never gone off track on what is so important, which is, I want people to be able to get their chemotherapy or get well or heal without me telling them what to do, but I want them to have the, the ability to do that because I had that. What's it? Howard Schultz says he sells, doesn't sell coffee, he sells experience and relationship. So what do you, what do you think you're really in business doing? What is your business? Well, we are in business um, because when people see a glassy baby and it's lit, there, um, you can't help, even my pets, everyone is, everyone except for I guess they don't see color, but every, every human being responds to color and light, every one of them, all of us. And they either make us feel upbeat, or they make us feel in love, or they make us feel calm, or some, some uh, emotion. And I think that that's what we really do at Glassy Baby. We build on people's life experiences so that they remember them, they cherish them, um, and that they, they feel, if they're afraid of them, they can work through that fear with that light of that candle um, for a lot of different things. Do, 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 do any stories come to mind of one of your customers of over the top passion or over the top sort of resolution in their lives because of this product and, and what it does for them? You know, pretty much every customer. It's a little bit, um, <laughs> it's a little, um, not scary, but it's, it's pretty incredible what people will share. Um, and I think that the hardest times for me are when people have lost children and they, Glassy Baby really fills a void um, because I can't imagine losing a child um, but it, it, the glassy baby, when they're lit and when people, when you, when you have lost a child, it's impossible to know what to do. You can bring them dinner, you can, um, you know, you can join a club with them, you can exercise with them, but you're never really touching their soul. And a lot of what glassy baby is about is being home and lighting a glassy baby for that person that just lost a, ch lost a child and really sending up all that positive care and energy. I believe the world feels that and they do. And you're not kind of pressuring them by saying, what can I do for you? How can I help? Because when you're in the position of being sick or having lost something, you don't know how to, um, you know, it's like there's nothing you can do but bring my child back or make me well. Yeah. And neither one of those things are. I think that's a really beautiful way to express it. And as I look at this, you can really feel the energy and a soul in this. So yeah. I, I thank you for doing that. We'll be re right back with Lee Rhodes from Classy Baby. Four Peaks is made possible by generous support from the Museum of History and Industry and from Weber Shandwick. We're back with Lee Rhodes, founder of Glassy Baby. Lee, you've accomplished so much in a short period of time with your remarkable company. As you look forward, what do you have on the horizon? What would you really like to see five to ten years from now with, with Glassy Baby? I think there's room in the flower industry for Glassy Baby. I think it's a $35 billion industry, and I would like $1 billion. And with our model, we could actually almost save oceans with that. Wow. So, so if you actually had sales of $1 billion, yeah. The money that you would put aside we for give 100 million, yeah, 100 million, and and so you're sure. thinking that environmental causes is something you want to move into as well. Well, I feel like the ocean has always been that, that just like a glassy baby. Um, you know, it's moving, it's lit, it's incredible, but I can never see below it. And now, as you read and you see and we eat, um, we can see that we don't understand much about it. And I feel like um, it's a living, breathing, very, very important part of our planet. And um, I'd like to understand it and help it continue to serve us. And, and how do you think you're going to be able to make the, the argument to people who are so accustomed to buying flowers for certain occasions that Glassy Babies are just as good or even better? I think they're better and I think that um, a bouquet of Glassy Baby is something that you can collect and you'll remember if you send your mother a Glassy Baby every, every Mother's Day, in 12 years she'll have a beautiful collection that's 
just connected to you. Um, you can't ever have enough Glossy Baby. I mean, I have hundreds and I still want more when they come out. So um, it's not something that you'll ever have too many of. You can't have too many. Um, and I also feel like, again, we are building a community. We are building um, experiential ways for people to communicate um, at times when it's really hard to communicate. It's just, sometimes it's just easier to say, I lit a candle for you today. I love that. It's a, communica it's a communication medium in itself. Yeah. That's, that's really tremendous. And that's what flowers are. Yeah. But they die. So. They do die. And this, this <laughs> lasts and then it has a story behind it. Yeah. Um, we've been asking this of all of our great innovators who we're featuring on our show this season. If you were freed of all obligations and expectations, completely free, what would you do? Well, in the big picture or just every day? I think either way. Um, I think I feel really lucky and I would just spend time with my dogs and my kids and my family. I think that that, that seems to be what resonates with me. You've gone through so much, I think, just to be able to have that personal relationship and just focus on that is something that would give you that freedom. Yeah, I think it's a really, really nice way of putting it and obviously something that's very personal to you as opposed yeah. to saying, I want to conquer the world. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've done that already or you're on your no. way. <laughs> That seems easier. <laughs> and you're definitely lighting up the world, so yeah. I think that's a good way of doing it. Seems easier it. to conquer well, the world. Well, I, I, you know, I've, it, your, your mission and your purpose is so clear to me, and I think it's something that people will continue to gravitate to. So I suspect you'll probably hit that $1 billion mm. in sales and be able to save the oceans <laughs> at the same time. So, <laughs> thank you. So Lee uh, Rhodes, thank you very much for, for joining us and for telling, you, telling us a story, the remarkable story of Glassy Baby. And we invite you all to extend your reach by connecting with us at fourpeaks.org. I'm Hanson Hossein. Production of Four Peaks would not be possible without the generous support of our sponsors.